Hello, my name is John McCunis with Eccles Built Incorporated, and my intention here is to give you a very quick and dirty video, training video, on the Eccles Built automatic belt tracking systems. You have to forgive me, I'm not only the narrator, but I'm also the videographer. Let's get started. All Eccles Built belt tracking systems have four basic components. The cylinder side assembly that you see here, the rollers, which I'll try to get in here and get a pretty good shot of. This particular one is a three roll unit, and notice that the rollers are laid, the belt is laced under the outside roller over the middle. I want to stress that because out in the field I see so many times the belt going over the outside and under the middle, which increases the load on those rollers about ten times. So under the outside, over the middle. The third component is our sensor. It usually consists of a paddle and a valve. We have other op ways to do that. We use photo eyes, electromechanical systems, uh, proportional systems, but we feel like this is the best application because of the simplicity. The fourth component on this system is the stationary side or pivot side. We call it the stationary side. It's got the slots in it. You can use that if the belt has a tendency to move one to one side over the other, you can use those slots to bias the tracker to, to take that out of the system. Let me talk quickly about the operation of the system. <clears throat> a lot of people don't understand the one cylinder, one valve system. They think they have to skew a bunch of rollers to get it to go into the move toward the valve, toward the paddle. That's not true at all. The way the system is set up, when it's retracted, it's a, got a skew angle in the rollers that pull the belt to the paddle, in this case, and when it's extended, it pushes the belt away from the paddle. Now that may change depending on the direction of the belt through the tracker, but in this case, moving from right to left through the tracker, that's the way it works. So in this case, I'm pulling the belt into the paddle, pushing the belt away from the paddle, pulling it into the paddle, pushing it away from the paddle. <clears throat> now a lot of people think, oh, that air cylinder is going to wear out. Well, most of those air cylinders can last a lot of years doing that. And what we like about this system is that it's a diagnostic tool. If you look down that conveyor line and you look at that tracker, if it's moving, you know you're tracking the belt. If it was a system that just sat and found one spot all the time, you wouldn't know you lost the belt until it was on the side. So if you keep an eye on it and you see it moving, you know you're tracking the belt. The other thing it can tell you is what's going on with the belt. If the tracker stays one side longer than the other, like it, let's say it stays in the retracted position longer than the extended position, then what it's telling you is that it's having a hard time getting the belt to come that this way towards the paddle. That means that there's something in the conveyor that naturally pushes the belt away from the, pad, from the paddle and so it's having a hard time getting it to come this way. If you watch that and you take note of that over a period of, of time, you discover that it's changing. You can head off problems before they happen. It's telling you the conveyor is getting worse. It's having trouble uh, holding the belt in position. So I need to go investigate what that problem is. So what you'd like to see is a nice even stroke. If you don't have that, then you can go to the stationary side and move it. Let's take this one for instance. This is a, we'll count the strokes here. One, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. So it's a three to two ratio. So it's having a little bit of trouble getting it to come this way. We could go over to the stationary side, and as we look at the stationary side from here, we could move it to the left, and it would help give it a little more skew angle in that direction and help to center up and, and even out that stroke. But eventually, if it, we keep having to do that, we need to go back and find out what on the conveyor is making the belt want to go that way. Let's talk about the controls. First control is the travel control screws. Go on that end and there's one on that end. And they, all they do is limit the amount of stroke on the conveyor, on the tracker. 
If you open them wide open, you get your most power. You got a lot of power, but you also may get the belt to overrun the paddle, so you may lose some tracking tolerance. You can squeeze those screws all the way into where it barely strokes in each direction, and that cylinder will hardly ever stroke, but you don't have very much power, so if you, your belt begins to wander or get some roller buildup and it starts to track off, you may lose the belt. We recommend about a half of an inch of stroke in each direction. If you're running a slower belt and you're going to be running for, or you're running for a long time, long periods of time before stopping and cleaning, then we recommend you open them up almost all the way. The other control is the flow controls. These are these right on the valve here. And this is, when they're set, what you see right now is what we'd like to see, a nice, even, smooth stroke. Unfortunately, what we see out there most of the time is that. And that's no good. That's just the tracker tearing itself up. There's no reason to have it stroke like that. Keep those flow controls pinched down to where they give you a nice, even stroke. Now, one thing to note here, these flow controls are on the, on the cylinder. On our, high, on our oven trackers, they're at the exhaust ports of the valve. And let me note right now that on the ovens, we use a high temperature valve. That valve needs to have X52 as the last three numbers. If it doesn't have X52, it's not a high temperature valve. But the flow controls will be right there where those white mufflers are. Sometimes we put them in line on the, the, the four row unit. The other thing that to take note is, is the location and position of the sensor paddle. Now you can position the belt on the conveyor anywhere you want to in and out by just positioning that paddle. If you want the belt to run down the middle, then position that paddle where the edge, it, the edge of that belt contacts that belt, contacts the paddle when the conveyor is centered. But if you want it to run a one inch one way or the other, you just move the paddle. You don't need to skew any rollers on the conveyor. You don't need to change the stationary side, you just loosen the screw right up here and slide that paddle in or out and the belt will follow. The other thing that to note about the, the sensor paddle is it determines, it's the biggest determinant of how tight a tracking you have. This position here where the belt contacts the paddle and this position here at the pivot point. The farther away you are from the pivot point, the more movement you'll have. So if you can get the the closer you get, the tighter tracking you'll have. But just remember, if you move that belt really close to the pivot point, it takes more force to push the paddle, so you may curl that belt up. So you've got to watch that. Thinner belts, you probably want to stay up in the three inch range. But if you need tight tracking, that's, your, that's the best way to get the tightest tracking is move towards the pivot point. The other thing we probably should discuss is maintenance. There's not a lot of maintenance on these. You have your standard bearing situations, which I'm sure you're aware of. The air cylinder would, will once in a while wear out. You should replace that. They should last for years, though. You should clean those plastic slides every once in a while. Take them out, clean them off, replace them if necessary. But the biggest thing is the sensor valve. <clears throat> if you want to make sure you change that, I would say at least every two years. Because if you lose the valve, you lose the belt. So you just might as well change it out and keep that going. <clears throat> One other thing I'll show you while I'm here is our, we have other types of trackers, and that is the four-row unit. We have a lot of different ones, but I happen to have a four-row unit on here. The EZ, the 3005 EZPD stands for product delivery. Obviously, it doesn't have the, the power that the three-row tracker does because it doesn't lace through. But if you mount this thing 20, 25 feet back from the discharge, you'll have enough leverage on that belt that you don't need as much power to track the belt. And it has the cylinder side, the stationary side, the rollers, and again, the sensor. Usually the flow controls on this are an inline type flow control. Well, that's it for now. It's kind of short. If you have any questions, feel free to call me. My name is John, and if I'm not available, I'll ask for Danny. He's our lead tech. Our number is 800-343-9020. Thank you.